request Mr. Asfar to please come on stage for this session, Pakistan's investment, uh, investment climate, the way forward. The moderator for this session is Mr. Adnan Rizvi. He is the head of advisory at KPMG in Pakistan and head of deal advisory for KPMG Middle East, South Asia region. Can we have a please round of applause? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a good morning to all of you. Uh, this session uh, is uh, dedicated to discuss the investment climate in Pakistan. And uh, there's no one better than uh, Asfar Hassan, who has been the uh, chairman of BOI and uh, a minister of state. And uh, in my recollection, uh, one of the most vibrant uh, persons in that particular role. So uh, what the format will be that I'll ask a few questions uh, from Asfar and then we'll open uh, to the uh, general questions uh, to all of you. Uh, two or three questions we'll take in the end. Uh, the first one uh, I'll start off with Asfar is about the current situation because that is something which is impacting uh, almost everyone. Uh, based on your experience, how do you see the current situation vis-a-vis -vis IMF and it seems that all the local uh, as well as international investment is stifled in the current scenario. So, so how do you read this situation and uh, what, what, are, what is your view on uh, its resolution? Thank you, Adnan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, I'm grateful to Management Association of Pakistan for inviting me here for this conversation on a very important and a painful topic, investment climate. And I should be very candid, uh, but there is a one disclaimer that uh, whatever I'm saying, I'm saying as a apolitical person, as a technocrat, and there is no criticism on any government or any political party or any political leader because I'm talking about the state of Pakistan. So as far as the investment climate is concerned, uh, since last few months we are saying this and in fact when I was a part of the government, I shared my views very candidly that Pakistan may is what business karna ek jihad hai. So this is the investment climate. Two days back, we hosted a national policy dialogue on localization for growth. And this was the discussion in the dialogue also. Because what we should as a state of Pakistan, our 80% focus, minimum 80% focus, should be on existing investors. As it includes local investors as well as the foreign investors. One foreign investor is the member of OICCI, 207 multinationals. Rest is the mid-size and small-size foreign investors from various countries. So there are very senior leaders. My, one of my mentors are here, sitting here. So I don't want to go into the details what happened exactly, because all of you are aware about the issues. But uh, what is lacking, what should be the way forward I want to focus on this. Instead of my sharing of my learnings in the end, I want to share my learnings in the beginning. That there is a serious issue of incompetence, all of you are aware. So incompetence is the key issue behind all this. Incompetence is the key issue, not corruption. And there is a serious debate these days that corruption is the issue or incompetence. I believe that incompetence is the issue. There is no tolerance on uh, corruption. There is no, you know, justification for any corruption. 
But where we are standing today is because of incompetence. Incompetence of our rulers in the last 70 years. Not one government or two governments. This is a process. And this is the collective responsibility of the stakeholders where we are standing today, number one. Number two is the lack of political will and lack of individuals' will because of the selfish interests and short-term gains and short-term goals. And third is the lack of collaboration. When you are part of any government, if you are a minister or you are heading any institution, you are acting like a flatoon. You know everything. So there is a lack of collaboration, again, because of selfish interests and vested interests. Without a collaborative environment, without the engagement of bureaucracy, without the engagement of other stakeholders, you can't progress in Pakistan system. So these three are the key findings I observed and I experienced during my short stay in the government. And I'm still working on the investment front with the Saudi and Uzbekistan government. The second important thing is lack of continuation of policies, lack of long-term strategy. It is always an ad hoc strategy. This is the real problem. We should study the other governments, not only the uh, developing nations, but also small countries like uh, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and many other countries in our own region. We should study their investment strategy, their economic roadmap. And there are a lot of learnings. We should study them. But every government is doing their own thing. So there is no lack of continuation. For example, Asif Juma is here. And he was part of the meetings when I was in the government. I attended many meetings. This was regarding the petrochemical policy. And Asif Bhai, this was supposed to be released in uh, April mid. Today we are in uh, mid of uh, March. There is 15 March. There is no policy. This was around 3 to 3.2 billion dollars investment. There were five players. One was ICI, who is now Lucky uh, Core Industries, LCI, Angro, Getron, uh, Tufal Chemical, and Lotte, which is Korean. But we did our best. This was about to finalize. After the departure of the government, the policies are still there. And this was a quick fix. This was a quick fix of one and a half year to two years, but we are still on the same way. Second is the case of pharmaceuticals. Day before yesterday, there was an ad in all the major newspapers, an appeal to the Prime Minister from the former Bureau and PPMA, the Pakistan Pharmaceutical Manufacturer Association. They are in real trouble. The Panadol price is cheapest in the world, but we are not ready to increase their price. We are not ready to allow them for uh, opening the LCs. How we will survive? Investment is something different, but after six to eight weeks, I think many of the important medicines will be out of stock. What we will do? So we started a focus approach on the raw material manufacturing in Pakistan. We approached China companies. Our embassy was very active. Ambassador Muin al-Haq played a very important role. Me and Khalid Mansoor, both he was the uh, CPAC authority chairman. And our target was to finalize as soon as possible the technology transfer for pharmaceutical industry product. And this was a realization after COVID because our 90% pharma products uh, are coming from India and China. But after COVID, there was a global supply chain issue. But this is in the best interest of our pharmaceutical company to start manufacturing here with the help of Chinese and other investors. So again, there is no specific focus on this area as well. And today we are facing the problem. So this is my uh, learning that lack of continuation of policies, lack of long-term strategy, we are facing the problems. And uh, as far as the existing investors are concerned, for example, the multinational companies, day before yesterday, the OICCI also sent a letter to the Prime Minister. All of you read in the newspaper yesterday. And uh, check the content of the, news, uh, the letter. One year back, 
I arranged uh, the OICCI Managing Committee meeting with the Prime Minister. This was a very productive meeting. This was regarding their survey of last two years. And all indicators were moving in the right direction. So because of interventions and lack of continuation of policies, we are again and again doing the same thing and we are, uh, you know, not utilizing our actual uh, potential. Right. So uh, going into some specifics, I think uh, people would like to know what's happening with CPEC. Uh, where, where is it right now? I, we don't hear about it anymore, I believe. I think uh, I worked very closely with uh, the China government. Uh, during the Prime Minister's visit to China, we signed the framework agreement. First time in the history of Pakistan and China, we signed the framework agreement. And as per the Chinese system, they always worked under the framework agreement. This was the pure effort of the Board of Investment. I was a secretary from Pakistan and the NDRC chairman uh, who is the counterpart of planning ministry of China, was the signatory from China. And uh, we also started the China-Pakistan Investment and Business Forum with 20 members each from both sides as the founding members. What was the objective? Objective was to work on outreach and join ventures. Because I believe that around 7 to 8 percent Chinese investors visited Pakistan. China's economy is too huge, their population is too huge. So both embassies collaborated, both governments collaborated. Board of Investment was the focal point because this was our initiative and the chair of Prime Minister. And we hosted this, uh, for, initiated this forum in December 2021. And uh, later on, because of the policies, the lack of facilities in the special economic zones, uh, and also lack of focus on many other priority areas. Uh, CPAC is uh, not very aggressive. Uh, with complete responsibility, I want to share that China government is not happy uh, with us as far as the uh, CPAC and other the investments are concerned. Uh, and this is not uh, in last one year only. This was earlier also. This is my learning. And uh, this is a continuation, actually, on their part. They are our friends. But you know, the world change. We always believe that China is our iron brother. Our friendship is uh, more sweeter than honey and more bigger than Himalayas. This is not the age of these talks, actually. Business is all about give and take. Business is all about profits. So because of our policies, because of our incompetence, and I'm saying very loudly, incompetence and selfish interests, vested interests of our rulers in the last few decades. China is unhappy and we fail to utilize the opportunities of investments from China. So, yes, Chinese are smart and they are rightly smart. This is the age of competition. This is the age of smart working. But if we are wasting someone's time, if we are not providing facilities to they are invested in the special economic zones. They will do the same because other countries are doing excellent health holding and facilitation for them. One of the case studies, for example, Saudi Arabia is interested for making an agri zone here. And uh, in my last meeting with the Saudi investment minister two months back, he said that our two more investors are again going to India and Kazakhstan for further investment in the agri, because there is a political instability in Pakistan. So with China, there is a need of focus approach. There is a need of a specific, uh, you know, focus approach and focus strategy and facilitation for them. For example, during the visit of uh, Prime Minister, with the, from Board of Investment, we propose a G2G uh, SEZ from China. China government actually established 22 uh, SEZs in 22 countries, and they are all G2G SEZs. Board of Investment is the secretariat of SEZs, but after the 18 amendment, the provinces are responsible. They are hiring the developers, and with all due respect with all the governments, the previous government, the current government, the provincial governments, SEZs are like now for land grabbers actually. This is a very lucrative business for all of them. There is a huge uh, corruption 
uh, in the SECs, there are a lack of facilities because uh, of the land issue. They are, if they need a five acre land, they always apply for 50, 60 acre land for futuristic plan. And later after commercialization, the land property is, uh, the price is very different. So we are not uh, providing good facilities. For example, Lucky Motors has started uh, in Karachi. I exactly know that what happened. They did many, it's the case of many other industries. So one thing I want to clarify that uh, when I was a part of the Board of Investment, my Prime Minister was very serious and uh, we started working on special economic zones because when I joined everyone was talking about the SECs and we, I requested Prime Minister to hold a weekly meeting because we were doing a guillotine exercise meeting on a weekly basis under which uh, we executed 115 reforms for SMEs. And this was a process of two years actually. And Prime Minister's steps were commendable. So I requested the same for SECs because this was the priority area. So with China, there are, you know, there is a need of long-term strategy. Chinese can't work like we are working in the government. All of you are the corporate leaders. If you are in the government, you can, uh, of course, perform better and you can change the Pakistan. So what I observed, and this is my very apolitical thinking, uh, and not only my very short stay in the Board of Investment, but in the last few years, that there is a need of complete overhauling of our system. The current political system can't work. Mark my words. I'm a very small man, I'm a very ordinary man, but I'm telling you, after 10 years, you will do the same talk again. This political system with the existing political setup, this can't work. Unfortunately, as a nation, we are, you know, we accepted the average performance as a nation. This is the problem. Our opportunities are unlimited. What I believe that uh, in every sector of our economy, there is an opportunity of few billions of dollars. There is an opportunity of few billion dollars investment from seven to eight countries annually. Again, there is a need of focus approach with country to country, like we are doing in the corporates. If I am a banker, my special focus is Asif Jumma or Hussain Basrai or Talib Karim or like this. Unfortunately, the government, we are wasting the time. We are not ready to initiate the long-term strategy which should be continued with the passage of time, and this will bring results, actually. So this is another learning, and uh, I believe that uh, I mentioned about the KSA. I will further highlight about a few studies from KSA, but uh, I must uh, mention about Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan I always mention because we hosted them last year, and I visited twice. Uh, as the minister uh, managed one trilateral ministerial meeting, one investment forum. And uh, now I'm working with the Uzbekistan government and two uh, Pakistani business houses. We facilitated them, one of them, one started already. What they are doing and why there is a need of a study of their, this is a very small country of 35 million individuals. But what they did in the last five, six years and where they are moving, this is something, a classic case study for all our businesses as well as for the government. They are doing the excellent facilitation with the investors and everything is now seems like manufacturing in uh, Uzbekistan, a small country. So our 25, 26 business houses are moving to uh, Uzbekistan. Few of them already established, few of them are working Few of them are looking for opportunities. Some of them are in contact with me also. So what they are doing, their president, their deputy prime minister, their chief of staff, their ministers, they are doing a commendable work and work as a team, not in isolation. Work in a collaborative environment. And Saudi and China and all other countries are investing heavily in these countries. Same is the case of Kazakhstan. So there is a need of a study and there is a need of pick the model they adopted, how they 
did it in the last four or five years, how they did it in the last eight, ten years. So this is another learning from my side. I think Azerbaijan is well is following the same route. Yes. Uh, so specifically about uh, Saudi, uh, I think uh, during your tenure and even now you are working very closely with the investment minister of Saudi. So exactly what uh, what are you working on right now and what, what's the potential? Actually when I joined the government uh, on the third day, Prime Minister called me and he assigned me the Saudi project and he said this first of all one in one on one meeting and later in the uh, group meeting that uh, we visited twice and there were excellent meetings with the Saudi leadership and Saudi business houses. And he was upset because he said that there was no follow up from our side. So this is our mistake. And my reply was that there is no claim from my side. But yes, there is one assurance that there is no, there will be no issue of follow up. So within six months we had 18 meetings. 1-8, eight, 18 meetings with the Saudi investment minister and his entire team. Two meetings were in-person meetings and 16 meetings we did online meetings, but detail meetings with a complete agenda. So actually, Saudi is a classic case study. Everyone is talking about Riyadh, the changing phase of Riyadh. I wrote an article also in Business Recorder. You can Google and search and check the complete details, how they are changing. This was a oil country. Their focus was only oil. In the last six years, everything changed. Everything changed. Now you can visit Riyadh and you will be amazed. You will be positively surprised what they are doing. Their public sector is more efficient in comparison with their private sector. First, the woman empowerment in the last six years is a commendable, an eye-opener. In the Ministry of Industries, there was one or two percent woman participation. Now this is 35%. Same is the case of Ministry of Energy. And these are the authentic numbers. So what they want with the Vision 2030, they want to be the powerhouse of every industry. This is their vision and they are working. One key factor who is actually responsible for all this development is Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And wherever I met the Saudis and the non-Saudis resided in Riyadh and other kind of cities of the Saudi Arabia, they are praising MBS because of their policies. And there is an accountability system of all the ministries. There is no more a special treatment with the royal families or the ruler families. There is a committee chaired by Mohammed bin Sulman, and every three months there is a performance evaluation. Mm -hmm. Same time, the facilitation as well. So the public investment fund is the third largest fund in the world. <coughs> the official size is $620 billion. The unofficial is $1.3 trillion. They are investing in every country in the world, in every big project. They are purchasing like anything. They are in a shopping mode actually. But unfortunately, this country, Pakistan, where they are interested to invest in eight different sectors, we are begging for one or two or three billion dollars. This is a big shame for Pakistan. This is a big shame for me and you and everyone in Pakistan. Trust me in last 18 meetings and after my departure from the government, I had several meetings with the investment minister and his many other uh, colleagues. He arranged my one meeting with the Saudi finance minister, Mr. Al Jadan, and also the governor of PIF, Public Investment Fund, Mr. Yasser. And they are also upset that what is happening in Pakistan, not only the political front, but overall. So they are investing everywhere in the world. Only Pakistan is a very sad story, I must say, that uh, we are begging for two or three billion dollars. Same is the case of uh, UAE, where our prime minister happily announced that uh, they gave us one billion dollar. And I requested them for $2 billion, and they gave us $2 billion. It's a shame on us. And I'm not criticizing the prime minister. Unfortunately, it is the act of every government. I'm talking about the state. The few billion <coughs> dollar opportunities from the private sector, the family business houses, and the government of UAE as well, where we worked very uh, with focus. What I did actually for all this, Mr. Jubba, I picked eight countries actually. 
and rest I treated them as a walk-in customer with excellent facilitation. And I realized after a few weeks that if I will wait for a better system, the three or four governments will be changed and the 15, 20 <laughs> chairmen will be changed. I was the fourth chairman of my uh, board of investment. And when I joined the board of investment, this was a dead horse. Within three years, when I joined, there was an announcement of new federal secretary for finance. This was a sixth federal secretary. There was five or six FBR chairmen. So I'm talking about taxation. I'm talking about investment. I'm talking about finance. Secretary of Finance is the most important person in Pakistan. Five or six, you change in three years. And same is the story of this government also. So now critically evaluate about the mindset, about the short-term approach, about the lack of uh, you know, competence, about the lack of homework. <clears throat> so these are the challenges. With Saudi Arabia, I must say, and I'm, what I'm uh, uh, propagating these days through my articles, regular articles, and in my talks, and in my direct interactions with the big houses, business houses, that uh, explore opportunities in Saudi Arabia. Because what I advised to my prime minister that G2G is really difficult. Sometimes G2B is important. B2B is important. We should create an enabling environment. And everyone is going to Saudi Arabia these days from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Their future investment initiative I attended three times. Uh, this is the third biggest forum in the world. Every investor from the world is attending every year in October. So two business houses I facilitated in Riyadh arranged their meetings. Uh, I must say that uh, our business houses should explore Riyadh, the opportunities in Riyadh for the JVs. They asked us to engage a few pharmaceutical companies. No one is ready to uh, collaborate with the pharmaceutical. There is a lack of vision from our business leaders also. Or sometimes there are boundings. We can't, you know, transfer dollars from here. How can our pharmaceutical company can establish anything in Riyadh or any other country. So this is one thing. A uh, few IT players are uh, now aggressive. Systems is one example. System is doing amazing work in Pakistan. They have uh, six or 7,000 employees. They are targeting 20,000 employees in the next five years under the current scenario. So they are the first one who establish a real platform in Riyadh, and they are focusing in Riyadh. SAP Saqib is here. He also engaged a uh, uh, system with their uh, counterparts in Riyadh. So there is a need of exploring Riyadh under this uh, current environment. You know, investment is like a water. If water is crossing, you should grab the maximum. Otherwise, water can't wait for you. So today is an environment that we should grab some business from Saudi Arabia, from a state level and from also the business to business. Otherwise, after five or six years, this will be a complete different story. Mm. And what uh, the investment minister said uh, to me last, uh, in the last meeting, he said, the brother, you have three to four years, and you are becoming irrelevant for the rest of the world. Maybe two years or three years, not four years. So this is up to us as a nation, as a state, that we should rethink about our priorities. Every day there is a tamasha you know, on the roads. From six to 12, if you are watching the television, I stopped television, watching television three years back, by the way. Because at 12 in the night, this seems like that there will be no Pakistan in the morning. The Pakistan is again shining and all. So lack of priorities, lack of visionary leadership, lack of competence, these are the key ingredients, key pain points behind where we are actually. This is uh, not the responsibility <clears throat> of any one political party or any government. This is a collective responsibility and collective failure. I think we'll take a couple of questions from the audience now. Uh, if we can have the mics and please be brief and uh, just ask the specific question and uh, avoid speeches. Mike, lay here again. Oh, yeah, time. 
Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Anis Yunus. As far as I cannot agree with you more, to look around like you mentioned Saudi Arabia. In my recent trip abroad, I realized that the one factor that we all want to be patriotic and want to do everything in Pakistan and from Pakistan is very good and we must and we must do, keep doing what we are doing. But there is an ample opportunity with Pakistanis abroad, professionals, business people, and there could be many projects which can be done. You see, we look at only one stream of inflow from abroad is for our workers working outside somewhere in Middle East and other areas and sending us money. <coughs> Why can't be that Pakistani businesses like Khadi is now abroad and some other brands are going, uh, I think ideas just went. We have to go outside, explore the world and have that inflow come into Pakistan rather than always depending on these workers because with the advent of technologies, these workers will always be there but the <coughs> complexion will change. Unless we build up enough technology oriented manpower which we are lacking right now, and I don't see in the pipeline. Unless we do that, we will lose that inflow that we are right now counting on, besides the ex traditional exports. And so uh, Saudi Arabia or many other countries where we could set up industries or uh, services which, in which we have expertise. And there are a lot of people now trying, so I think it's a good idea to move out without thinking that we are being uh, we, we are not patriotic to Pakistan. The Ji, thank you. purpose is still should be the same. Uh, Actually, I focused uh, on eight countries. I only mentioned something about three countries because I can go hours and hours. What I did actually, I engaged the private sector with me. For whole Middle East, I engaged four top investment bankers. One was from SoftBank, he is the managing partner of SoftBank Middle East. One was from uh, Ashmore, one was a lady, worked with Saudis and all. And one was my friend, investment banker again, and private equity person from Kuwait. And what I advised to my team that uh, this is not my and your work. Engage the best experts, the best Pakistanis who can guide us for day-to-day -day things. We signed the NDAs. Uh, with them and uh, later on we were appointing uh, one person each the young girls and boys from the investment uh, field not the and this was through IFC because the government procedures are very tough so I asked the Prime Minister that I need uh, these individuals and he said yes appoint but with the Federal Public Service Commission there is no rocket science, you can't engage anyone before one year. Tariq Ram Sahib is here, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So one of my additional secretary, Mukaram Jansar, who is now heading customs, very efficient bureaucrat, he advises us that we have the funds from IFC, we should engage individuals from IFC. So we started the searching and we were appointing them from June 1st. So, you know, uh, there is a need of complete collaboration with the private sector, if I'm talking about the agri, you should engage the best individuals from Pakistan and abroad who are expert of agri. If uh, I'm a federal secretary or I'm a federal minister, this is not, no, there's no guarantee that I'm, uh, you know, expert of everything. If I'm talking about fertilizer, or if I'm talking about any other industry, we should engage the best experts. So this, uh, you know, policy should be continued mm -hmm. and government should uh, engage the private sector instead of Making 25, 26 persons councils and committees, there are, I think, 100 committees. And there is a need of one minister to look after all these committees also, in addition to 85 ministers currently. And in our government also, there were 71 ministers, I think, 70, 71 ministers. So you engage the best persons. If you are talking about uh, uh, technology, you engage uh, three or four important players. And you can start working instead of committee and committees and committees. So our formula for uh, the China, our formula for the Middle East, uh, including Qatar, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, this has started working very well. Because day, night, we were in consultation with these four individuals. And uh, we were consulting with the other players also. So we, whatever we design, 
however we worked, we worked under the consultation of these individuals. Ji, please, uh, second and last question. Unfortunately, we are, uh, when we talk about foreign investments and uh, business uh, in Pakistan, we are always looking at the production side of the business, goods manufacturing side of the business. Whereas in present world, services is taking place, going ahead of the manufacturing. Why don't we in Pakistan try to find and uh, acquire the fine fundings on service areas? For instance, uh, a lot of aeroplanes are refueled at uh, Delhi airport and there is a huge uh, traffic on Delhi airport. Bahawalpur in Pakistan is exactly parallel to Delhi airport. If we build an infrastructure at Bahawalpur airport and offer fuel refueling services here, the, we can find international collaboration for this project. We can share our earnings with them, Saudi or China or whatever. We can also go for other services. For instance, we hire some, we, we open a, any university in Pakistan that goes for uh, hotel management and we develop our people in hotel services. So what we are looking for is production side only, whereas uh, service site is easy, available for Pakistan and we can find foreign investment in that area also. So every government is focusing on these areas, but problem is uh, again, absence of long-term strategy. So this is my only answer. Uh, otherwise, there are opportunities in every service sector. Technology is one area. This, can, this is the game changer. But uh, our number is around $2.1 billion IT exports. This will be the target is next three years, I think $5 billion. So in addition to honesty, honest leadership, we really need competence. And we really need uh, continuation of government. And this is not political and not because I was part of the last government. The departure of the last government was absolutely a real disaster for Pakistan. And this is, I'm healthy, okay? this is not my political statement. This is what I believe. The continuation is very important. The continuation of the last government till October 2023 was important. Trust me. And by the way, whatever I shared, but I must say, and I'm not marketing anyone, Imran Khan was the easiest boss for me. He listened to everything. Sometime I was uh, double-minded that uh, I asked something and he said, do it. I tried to explain him. He said, do it. You are responsible. And he was cooperative like anything. There was a problem of the system. So I engaged the bureaucracy. I engaged the military. I believe on the combination of military, bureaucracy, and uh, the political government. Because we should be realistic. We should avoid the political slogans and everything. Whatever political parties are bashing, please don't trust them. Make your own judgment. If I was working with China, I was working with uh, Middle East countries, I was working with Netherlands, other countries, Military is an integral part of our system. We should accept. We, we will like it or not, but this is the reality. Engagement of bureaucracy is very important. And trust me, there was no problem from bureaucracy as far as my case is concerned. Many of them were my friends, but many of them were not my friends. I developed my friendships after serving in the government. So respect in your attitude is everything. What we are doing in the corporate sector, we are doing the same, so why not in the government sector? Why blaming bureaucrats all, all the time? Yes, there is a problem in the bureaucratic system. The prime minister and the cabinet is responsible to change the system in the bureaucracy. Bureaucrat will never change the system. <clears throat> so reward them and make a proper uh, organizational structure and follow all the ministries, bound all the ministries to work under one umbrella of, like we are doing in the corporate. So I believe that there are brilliant bureaucrats in every ministry, in every organization. And there are duffers also, full of duffers, bunch of duffers. But how long we will cry for the bureaucracy? Trust me, in six months, there was no one bureaucrat 
who actually gave me tough time because I engaged them. Respect and engage them and this is the only thing. What we are doing all the time, we are criticizing the bureaucracy. In my board of investment team, I can mention 10 or 12 names who are the brilliant individuals. Mukarram, I already mentioned, Farina Mother was my secretary, you met her. Uh, Hashi Rahman, special economic zones we are crying again and again. One of my DG was Abdul Sami, he is still there. I must say that he is a thought leader on special economic zone. I had meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings with him, daily basis, because SEZ was my critical pain point mm. for industrialization. So if you can sit with him, you can realize that he is a thought leader. So why we are not implementing the recommendations? So this is a problem with the prime minister and the cabinet because of the law, uh, lack of long-term planning and continuation. Ji, Moeen sahab, this was supposed to be the last question, but I can't do it. Sir. Sir, sir. Sir, sir. Sir, sir. Sir, sir. Thank you very much. You have been a star performer and we all thank you for voicing the business community's concerns in your tenure. आप कहते हैं कि आपने टीवी देखना छोड़ दिया है मेरा मकसद यह है कि शायद पाकिस्तानी चैनल आपने देखने छोड़ दिए कल रात को अल जजीरा को देखते हुए बड़ा दुख हुआ क्योंकि इमरान खान का इंटरव्यू था एक टी-शर्ट में थे वो और काफी परेशान थे तो बेटी अब कनाडा में है वो पूछ रही है कि अब्बा क्या हो रहा है बेगम परेशान है तो क्या किया जाए صبح اٹھے فجر کے وقت تو ایک صاحب ہیں خالد ظلمے جو خلید ظلمے ان کی ایک ٹویٹ تھی پاکستان is facing a triple challenges and crisis political, economic and security اب آئی ایم ایف کا ڈیل سٹک ہے اور سارے لوگوں کی توجہ یہی ہے کہ کیا یہ ڈیل ہوگا کب ہوگا پانچ بلین ڈالر کا گیپ چھے بلین ڈالر کا گیپ اور حکومت لگی ہوئی ہے زمان پارک کی طرف یہ ٹائم نہیں ہے کہ جو ہے وہ پولیٹیکل کرائیسس کریئٹ کی جائے ڈیل کریں اسٹرک کریں ختم کریں اب وہ شخص کہہ رہا ہے کہ جی آپ کے پاس جون میں الیکشن کریں ڈیٹ تیہ کریں پولیٹیکل پارٹیز ملیں تو یہ سب کی پریشانی ہے انویسمنٹ تو سیکنڈری چیز ہے ملٹی نیشنل لوکل سب لوگوں کے لوسز پاؤنڈ ہو رہے ہیں آیا ایکسچینج سے ہو رہے ہیں یا ویسے ہو رہے ہیں جابز کی ایشیوز ہیں بہت بڑا چیلنج ہے انفرچنیٹلی آپ کے ویو سر سر لاسٹ ٹین منس میں جو ملٹی نیشنلز آپ کی ہیں وائی سی سی آئی جو ممبرز ہیں وہ یہاں سے پیسے نہیں بھیج پا رہے ہیں اور یہاں سے پیسے نہیں بھیج پا رہے ہیں اور یہاں سے پیسے نہیں بھیج پا رہے ہیں اور یہاں سے پی نمبر ون نمبر ٹو آنا سیریس نوٹ جو آپ نے بات کی ٹی وی چینلز کی میں ٹی وی دیکھتا ہوں بٹ میں نے پولٹیکل ٹاک شوز دیکھنے بند کر دی ہیں تو میں آنا سیریس نوٹ آپ کو بتاؤں کہ میں نے شبلی فراف صاحب سے بات کی جب یہ واز دی انفرمیشن منسٹر تو میں نے کہا شبلی بھائی اس کو بند کریں کسی طرح سے بڑا آف کورس اس واز نوٹ ان اینڈ پر فواد آگئے فواد کو میں نے کہا پھر میں ڈی جی آئی اس پیار کو میں نے بولا تو میں یہ بلیف کرتا ہوں کہ یہ جو پولٹیکل ٹاک شوز جس انداز میں اس ملک میں چلتے ہیں دیکھیں سپیچ کی ازادی ہونی چاہیے ایکسپریشن کی ازادی ہونی چاہیے اور بہت زیادہ ہے پاکیس میں ضرور سے زیادہ ہے لیکن یہ چھے سے بارہ جو تماشا اس ملک میں چلتا ہے نا یقین کریں چھے مہینے بن کر کے دیکھیں اس کو آپ یہ ملک نہ پوزیٹیو ڈیریکشن میں شروع ہو جائے گا یہاں بہت اچھی سٹوریز ہیں یہاں بہت کچھ ہوتا ہے پ یہ پرائم ٹائم میں جتنا ٹی وی کمرشل ایک ٹاک شو کو ملتا ہے جتنی ریٹنگز ان کی ہائی ہوتی ہیں وہ کسی ملک میں نہیں ہوتی ہیں یہ پرابلم ہماری ہے پرائیورٹیز کا ہمارا مسئلہ ہے اس ٹائم پہ انٹرٹینمنٹ پروگرامز آنے چاہیے اچھے پروگرام آنے چاہیے نہ کہ چھے سے بارہ ایک تماشا چلے پھر اگلے پورا دن اسی پہ ہم ریپیٹ کریں تو یہ سیریس نوٹ پہ بات ہوئی بٹ آف کورس کوئی انفرمیشن منسٹر یا ایون ڈی جی آئی اس پی آر اس پالسی کو چینج نہیں کر سکتا یہ پیمرا کو چاہیے کہ کچھ اس قسم کی چیزیں کرے کیونکہ بلیم گیم چلتا ہے وہی پچاس ساٹھ آپ کاؤنٹ کیجئے گا سارے چینلز ہیں نا ایٹی نائنٹی چینلز ہیں یہ ٹوٹل ففٹی سکسٹی لوگ ہیں جو ان چینلز پر بیٹھے نظر آتے ہیں وہ ہر پارٹی انہی کو نومنیٹ کر رہی ہوتی ہے سیم ٹاک اگین اگین بلیم گیم بلیم گیم نو کنسٹرکٹیو تھنگ 
تو نیشن بلڈنگ جو ہے نا وہ اس طرح نہیں ہوتی میڈیا آج کے دور میں بہت امپورٹنٹ ہے تو ہم کس طرح یوٹیلائز کر رہے ہیں یہ سمینہ یہاں پہ بیٹھی ہیں ون آف دا میں ان کو بہت ہائیلی ریٹ کرتا ہوں بیکاز آف ہر ورک ان ہر کیریئر اینڈ دیر آر بلڈنگ ڈیویل لائک ساکیب پورے ایس اے پی ریجن میں ایس اے پی پاکستان کی ریٹنگ اس وقت ہائی ہے ایسے ہمارے بہت سارے آصف پیر ہیں بہت ساری کمپنیز کے لوگ ہیں تو ہم کیوں ٹیکنالوجی میں پیچھے ہیں ہم کیوں اتنا سلو پروگریس کر رہے ہیں ایوریج پرفارمنس کے ہم آدھی ہو گئے ہیں دس از دا پرابلم میں دو تین باتیں آخری میں کرنا چاہوں گا ٹائم شارٹ ہے دیکھیں جو میں نے آپ سے بات کی نا پولیٹیکل سسٹم کی یہ بڑی پین فل بات ہے آئی بلیو آن ڈیموکریسی اینڈ آئی ایور بلیو آن ڈیموکریسی بٹ یہ جو سسٹم اس وقت چل رہا ہے نا یہ چل نہیں پائے گا یہ میں آپ کو آج بتا دوں میری بہت بیٹک رہتی ہے ٹوئن سٹیز میں اور میں آپ کو بتا رہا ہوں یہ نہیں چل پائے گا یہ کلیٹ کیپچر ہے اس ملک میں اور وہ ایلیٹی کیپچر کی وجہ سے یہ سسٹم اس سے چلتا ہے تو ہمیں ایک بہت بگ ری تھنک کی ضرورت ہے ہر ہر چیز کے لیے میں صرف انویسٹمنٹ کی بات نہیں کر رہا میں تو ملک کی بات کر رہا ہوں ایک بہت بڑی یہاں عمران احمد بیٹھے ہیں یہ سی این این کو سکسٹی ایٹ کنٹریز میں ریپرزنٹ کرتے ہیں ہر کنٹریز کے ساتھ یہ انویسٹمنٹ کی بات کر رہے ہوتے ہیں سی این این کی طرف سے سوائے پاکستان کے حالانکہ پاکستانی یہ کراچی میں بیسڈ ہیں بیکاز کے کوئی اسٹوری نہیں ہے کوئی کام ہی نہیں ہے کوئی فوکس ہی نہیں ہے پی ٹی وی ایک ماؤتھ پیس ایک پولیٹیکل گورنمنٹ کا جو بھی گورنمنٹ آتی ہے تو ہمیں اپنی پرائرٹیز کو تبدیل کرنا ہوگا ہمارا جو بگیسٹ مسئلہ ہے نا وہ کیا ہے ہمارا بگیسٹ مسئلہ جو بگیسٹ تھریٹ ہے نہ تو وہ انڈیا ہے نہ اسرائیل ہے میں بہت ریگولر یہ بات بولتا ہوں ہمارا جو بگیسٹ تھریٹ ہے پاکستان کا وہ ٹوینٹی فائیو ملین کٹس آؤٹ آف اسکول ہیں اگر آج آپ نے ان کو ووکیشنل ٹریننگ نہیں دی ان کو آپ نے تعلیم نہیں دی دس سال میں یہ ایٹم بم سے زیادہ خطرناک ہو جائیں گے ٹو ڈیز آر پاپولیشن از ٹو تھرٹی ٹو ٹو فورٹی ملین بائی ٹوینٹی فورٹی سیون فورٹی ایٹ دس پاپولیشن ول کراس فور ہنڈریڈ ملین اینڈ سکسٹی فائیو پرسینٹ پاپولیشن ول بی انڈر تھرٹی ایئرز آف ایج سو ویئر وی آر لیڈنگ ویئر وی آر موونگ آئی ایم ناٹ ہیئر ٹو یو نو اسپوائل دی انوائرمنٹ بٹ آئی ایم شیئرنگ دا ریالٹی ایز اے کنسرن پاکستانی میں بھی بزنس کرتا ہوں میں بھی ایک پاکستانی ہوں اس شہر میں گھومتا ہوں ٹیکس دیتا ہوں جہاں روڈ کا انفراسٹرکچر ختم ہو گیا ڈے یسٹر ڈے وی یوسٹیڈ انفراسٹرکچر سبمٹ ود انفراضامن آئی اوائڈ اٹ ٹو سی فیو تھنگس بیکاز دے ور فارنرز آلسو آئی اوائڈ اٹ بٹ آپ انفراسٹرکچر تو اس شہر کا دیکھ رہے ہیں نا پروجیکٹس تو آپ دور کی بات ہے آپ کو وینس جیسی گلیاں دکھائی دیتی ہیں گڈر کے پانی سے آپ کو پہاڑیاں دکھائی دیتی ہیں گاربیج کے پورے پہاڑ لگے ہوئے تیس ملین کی پاپولیشن ہے اس شہر کی پیپرس پہ سولہ ملین ہے آپ جا کے اسلام آباد پنڈی میں کسی سے بات کر لیں وہ کہتا ہے میں نے ہر ایک سے بات کی ہر ایک سے بات کی فور اسٹار تک کے پاس میں گیا کہتے ہیں دس بارہ پندرہ لاکھ اور ہوگی میں کہا چلے میرے ساتھ آپ چل کے دیکھیں تو جس شہر میں آپ بارہ تیرہ ملین لوگ کاؤنٹ نہیں کر رہے اس شہر کی کیا اسٹریٹجی بنائیں گے سیو از دا کیس آف دا ہول کنٹری سو وی آر ان اے ریئل ٹریپ دس از دا رسپانسبلٹی آف سول سوسائٹی دس از دا رسپانسبلٹی آف بزنس لیڈرشپ کہ ایک تو صحیح کو صحیح کہیں غلط کو غلط کہیں کسی ایک پولیٹیکل پارٹی کو خدا نہ مان لیں جو اچھا کام کرے اس کو اچھا کہیں جو برا کام کرے اس کو برا کہیں سب سے پہلے اپنی اپنی اصلاح کریں ہر پارٹی میں اچھے اور برے لوگ ہیں شاہد حقان عباسی نے ابھی تین دن پہلے اسپیچ کی ابھی یونیورسٹی میں وہ صرف نکال کے دیکھ لیں یوٹیوب پہ موجود ہے اینڈ کمنگ فرام دی ایکس پرائم منسٹر دس واز ریئلی پین فل دس واز ریئلی پین فل بٹ واٹ ایور ہی سیٹ دس واز دا روڈ میپ فار پاکستان سو میں آپ کو صرف آخری میں یہ بات کرنا چاہتا ہوں کہ انویسٹمنٹ کی اپرچونیٹیز بہت ہیں ہمارے مسئلے اتنے بڑے نہیں ہیں سولوشنز آسان ہیں یہ میری ایک لرننگ ہے اور بہت پریکٹیکل میں بات کر رہا ہوں آپ سے وداؤٹ اینی ایموشنز وداؤٹ اینی ایگزیجریشن بہت آسان ہے ہمارے ریزولیوشنس چھ مہینے کام کیا آپ یقین کریں کہ آٹھ سیکٹرز میں سعودیز ور بیگنگ فار کریٹنگ اے ایگری زون ان پاکستان ان کی ضرورت ہے جناب وہ کہتے ہیں آپ کو فوڈ سیکیورٹی پارٹنر بنانا ہے اٹھارہ میٹنگ کے منٹس نکال لیں آپ کو پتہ چل جائے گا وہ سعودیز کیا کہہ رہے تھے کس کس سیکٹر کی بات ہو رہی تھی ہم تیار ہی نہیں ہیں ہم دو بلین تو تین بلین ڈالر مانگتے ہیں ان سے جا کے ہمیں شرم آنی چاہیے ایز اے اسٹیٹ آئی ایم ویری ہارش بٹ آئی ایم ویری آئی ایم ریئلی ان پین رائٹ ناؤ آئی ایم میں جس وقت بات کر رہا ہوں آپ لوگوں سے یہاں میرے سارے سینئرس بیٹھے ہیں میرے دوست بیٹھے ہیں بٹ یہ ملک اس طرح نہیں چلے گا ہمیں اپنی پرائرٹیز کو صحیح کرنا ہوگا جہاں سے آپ کو بلینز آف ڈالر کے پیسے مل سکت
بجائے اس کے کہ چائنہ کے ساتھ جا کے آپ جی ٹو جی ایسی سی کی بات کریں آپ چائنہ کے ساتھ جا کے ٹکنالوجی ٹرانسفر کی بات کریں یہ فارما والوں کا مسئلہ سالف کریں باقی مسئلہ سالف کریں آپ جا کے وہ فرینڈلی لون مانگتے ہیں تین بلین ڈالر دو بلین ڈالر آئی ایکسپیرینس ہیں دے گورنمنٹ آلسو اور اس ہے ایوری گورنمنٹ نوٹ ون گورنمنٹ پرائم منسٹر اچھا ہوتا ہے تو اس کے لوگ اچھے نہیں ہوتے بہت سارے پرائم منسٹر کو بھی چاہیے جو ساتھ میں گدھے گھوڑے ان کی تمیز کرے جو گھوڑے ہیں جو گدھے ہیں ان کی تمیز کرے جو پرفارم کرتے ہیں ان کو رکھے جو نہیں کرتے ڈیڑھ سال پر فارق کرے ان کو کیا آپ نے کسی کمپنی میں نون پرفارمرز کو رکھا آج تک رکھیں گے آپ افورڈ کریں گے چھ مہینے سے زیادہ یہاں پانچ پانچ سال دو دو سال آپ افورڈ کرتے ہیں انہی کو کنٹینیو کرتے ہیں آپ کے بعد لے دے کے گنتی کچن فائنانس منسٹر ہیں تیئیس کروڑ کی پاپولیشن میں وہی منسٹرز آتے ہیں ابھی الیکٹیبلز ہوں گے ابھی یہ دیکھیں الیکشن کا بناؤنس ہوتے ہیں ہوتے نہیں ہوتے پتہ چلے گا وقت بتائے گا کن حالات میں ہوتے ہیں اور الیکٹیبلز جو ہے نا الیکٹیبلز ہی انہی گورنمنٹس میں آپ کو نظر آئیں گے وہ ہمارے دوست ہیں میرے آپ کے سب کے دوست ہیں بٹ پلیز آئی تھنک کہ ہمیں کنسٹرکٹیو سوچنا چاہیے اس ملک کا بہت پوٹینشیل ہے اور میں آخری بات کر رہا ہوں صرف چھ مہینے میرے ساتھ ایک چیز ہوتی تھی اور میری ٹیم کے ساتھ بھی ہوتا تھا یہ ہر دن کا میرا ایک روٹین تھا کہ پہلے غصہ آتا تھا پھر افسوس ہوتا تھا یا پہلے افسوس ہوتا پھر غصہ آتا تھا لیکن جب رات کو سوتے تھے نا تو یقین جانے میں ذمہ داری سے کہہ رہا ہوں کہ میں آپٹمسٹک ہو کے سوتا تھا کیونکہ ایک دو ایک دو چیز ایسی آتی تھی کہ آپ کو غصہ آتا تھا آپ کو افسوس ہوتا تھا ایسے ایسے تماشے دیکھتے تھے کہ حیرت ہوتی کہ اس ملک میں ایسا بھی ہوتا ہے تو بہت سی باتیں میں نہیں کر سکتا نہیں کرنی چاہیے لیکن دن بھر جو باقی چیزیں چلتی تھیں اس میں اتنا پوٹینشیل ہوتا تھا اتنی چیزیں ہوتی تھیں کہ آپ آپٹمسٹک ہو کے سوتے تھے سکون کی دن سوتے تھے تو یہ ہے پاکستان کی اپرچونیٹی اٹس اپ ٹو آس کوئی باہر سے کوئی مسیحا نہیں آئے گا چلیں تھینک یو ویری مچ اسفر ویری انسائٹ فل کامنٹس